Yeah, Miguel Arista for trade topics. We're going to graph the plot the point negative 5, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And up to 1, 2. And I'm going to draw that triangle. And this will be my angle theta. And now I need to figure out what this side is over here. So it's going to be the square root of 2 squared plus 5 squared. It's an absolute value. And that's going to give me 4 and 25. The square root of 4 plus 25. So this is going to be the square root of 29. And that's going to be my hypotenuse. Sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is root 29. And the side opposite this angle is over here. And this would be the adjacent side. So the opposite is going to be 2 over root 29. Cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent is negative 5 over root 29. And then tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent. So that would be 2 over negative 5. And I was going to put the negative upstairs, but you don't have to. Um, the cosecant is going to be the square root of 29 over 2. The secant is going to be the square root of 29 over negative 5. The, the negative can stay upstairs. The cotangent is going to be negative 5 over 2. Now I wish to find theta. In order to find theta, I'm going to use the positive number. So I'm going to do inverse cosine, or arc cosine, of 2 over square root 29. So I'm going to do the arc sine. I'm going to make sure I'm in degree mode. And then I'm going to do the arc sine of... 2 over root 29. And that's going to give me 22 degrees. Theta equals 22 degrees. Number 2, graph cosecant. Well, there's a hidden 1 up front, so the amplitude is 1. The period is 2 pi divided by 1 half. So I can't see that, so that's going to be 2 over 1 times 2 pi. The period is going to be 4 pi. So I'm going to go out 2, 4, 6, 8, and put 4 pi there. Half of 4 pi is 2 pi. Half of 2 pi is pi. 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. <clears throat> the amplitude is 1, so I'm going to go up 1 and put a dashed line. I'm going to go down 1 and put a dashed line. I physically cannot graph cosecant, so I'm going to graph the relation related to cosecant, which is sine. <coughs> so I'm going to graph sine, and sine starts at 0, goes up, through, down, and back too. So that's the sine curve. I'm going to continue that. I'm going to continue it backwards as well. I'm not asked to graph sine. I am asked to graph cosecant. So the secret is, wherever the cosecant crosses, wherever the, the sine graph crosses the x-axis, that's going to give me something known as a vertical asymptote. A vertical asymptote. A vertical asymptote. Now, <coughs> There's a whole bunch of these, but it goes on forever, but for what, what I have, we only have one, two, three, four, five. Now here comes the actual cosecant graph. It's these parabolic shaped U's that go between and touch the sine curve. Number three, this is called Heron's formula. I add them all up, so I'm going to have 23 plus 21 plus 20. I add those all up, I get 4, I get 64. And then you divide it by 2, and that gives me 32. Then I take that 32, and I put it in this big formula over here. So it's big square root of 32 times... 32 again, notice S and S, minus that number, 23. 32 minus that number, 21. And then the last one, 32 minus that number, 20. Some people just enter this into the calculator. I like to freshen it up a little bit. <clears throat> 32 times, well, 32 minus 23 is 9. And 32 minus 21 is 11. And 32 minus 20 is 12. I didn't even need that big radical. Now I'm going to enter that into the calculator. Um, square root of 32 times 9 times 11 times 12. 194.97, I'll just say 195. <clears throat> Number four is the sine angle side formula. That's going to be one half, one side, times the other side, times the side of the sine of the included angle. So this is going to be 0.5 times something, times something, times the sine of something. That's going to be 12, 14, and 50 degrees. <clears throat> 0.5 times 12 times 14 times sine of 50 degrees. And that gives me 64.3. 64.3. For number 5, we use the middle school formula, 1 half base times height. So it's going to be 1 half of the base, 12, times the height, 5. This is a distractor. We don't need that. It's the hypotenuse in this case. Half of 12 is 6. 6 times 5. That's going to give me 30. Solving the trig equation, I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So this is going to give me 4 sine squared x equals 3. And I divide both sides by 4. This is going to give me sine squared x equals 3 over 4. When we get rid of that square, I square root both sides. This is going to equal the square root of 3 over 2, but when I add the square root, I add a plus minus. <clears throat> I need to find on my table where the sine, where the sine is plus or minus root 3 over 2. Sine is plus or minus root 3 over 2. Here at 60 degrees, here at 120 degrees, here at 240 degrees, and here at 300 degrees. And I'm going to put those answers over here on the right. So remember, it was 60 degrees, 120 degrees, 240 degrees, and 300 degrees. This one only has two answers. I'm going to add 1 to both sides, so it's going to give me 2. Cosine x equals 1. Divide both sides by 2. So I ask myself, where does cosine x equal 1 half? 
Again, I go to my trade table, and I look for where cosine x, cosine x equals one half. Positive one half. That's at 60 degrees and at 300 degrees. Notice there's only two positive answers for this one. 60 degrees and 300 degrees. 60 degrees and 300 degrees. Law of sine is pretty difficult. First thing I want to do is find this upper angle here. And I do that simply by doing the geometry. So it's going to be 180 minus 35, 180 minus 35 minus 55, 180 minus 35 minus 55. That gives me 90 degrees. So this angle up top is 90 degrees. And angle C over here is 90 degrees. That's what that means. Now I'm going to do my law of sine. Sine of AOA over baby A equals sine of B over B to find B. So sine of A over A equals sine of B over B. But I'm going to go for this one. I'm going to go for my A over A. And notice I put, just put it there. It's 10 and 35. I have the number 10 and I have the number 35. So I'm going to do my line equals sine line. And it's going to give me sine of angle A, which is 35 degrees, over sine A, which is 10, equals sine of 55. Sine of 55 degrees over B. And I'm going to use this to find what side B is. And I do my little cross multiplication, one step, one line. So it's going to be sine of 55 degrees, sine of 55 degrees, be sure to close the parentheses, times 10 divided by sine of 35 degrees. Be sure to close the parentheses. And that gives me 14.28 or just 14.3. I set up another proportion, line equals sine line, and now I'm going to go for A. I'm sorry, C this time. Baby C. I copy this down, sine of 35 degrees over 10 equals sine of 90 degrees over C. Do my calculator key in. So it's going to be sine of 90 degrees, sine of 90 degrees, be sure to close the parenthesis, times 10, divided by the sine of 35 degrees, and this is going to give me 17.4. <clears throat> Graph it. Y equals mx plus b. I begin at negative 1. From there, I use my slope. I go up 2, right 3. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. 2, 3. And then I connect the dots. Y equals negative x. Y equals negative x. That's plus 0. So it goes through 0 and it goes down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. And it follows the pattern on the other side. Y equals negative x. Y equals 2. This is a hoi. It is a horizontal line. Through y equals 2. So I go to y equals 1, 2. And it's a hoi, which is a horizontal line through y equals 2. X equals 3. X equals 3. This is a vux. X equals 3. That is a vertical line. Through x equals 3. A vertical line through x equals 1, 2, 3. It is a vertical line. <clears throat> this is a hoi, but it's an inequality. Hoi. So it's a horizontal line through y equals 1. Solid line. But now I must shade. I must shade below the line. Because the inequality says that. Now I'm going to do a little cover-up method for the standard form of this equation. To find out what the y-intercept is, I just cover up the x value. This means x equals 0. That leaves me with a little tiny equation. If I were to solve that, 3y equals 6. That would give me 2. So I have a point at 0, 2. And then I cover up the middle. And that gives me a little tiny equation, 2x equals 6. If I were to solve that, 2x equals 6, I would divide both sides by 2. That would give me 3, 0. And then I just connect the dots there. It's x squared, so it's parabolic. It has a vertex located at opposite same, 2, negative 4. So I shift right horizontally 2, and I shift vertically down 1, 2, 3, 4. I implement 1, 3, 5. So from here I go up 1 over 1, up 1, 2, 3 over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1, go back up 1 left 1, up 1, 2, 3 left 1, up 5 left 1. And there's my parabola. I'm going to connect it with a smooth graph. Another parabola. Some people find this one a little tricky. Okay? The vertex is opposite same, but there's no zero out there, or any number out there, so it's 3, 0. It's just a horizontal shift, right 3, up 1 over 1, up 1, 2, 3 over 1. I'm using 1, 3, 5. Up 1 over 1, up 1, 2, 3 over 1, and then connect the dots. Another quadratic. Notice this time, there's nothing grouped with the x. So this is going to be 0, negative 4. 0, negative 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. A, horizontal, a vertical shift down 4. I implement the 1, 3, 5. I go up 1 over 1, up 1, 2, 3 over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1, up 1 left 1, up 3 left 1, up 5 left 1. <clears throat> Square root function, it's not going to have a vertex. It's going to have what we call a starting point. So it's going to be opposite same, negative 3, negative 1. So I go negative 3, negative 1. That's where I begin. And I also use 1, 3, 5 on this one. I go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, 2, 3. This one goes sideways. Sort of like this graph, it turns sideways. <clears throat> I go up 1 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I notice it takes me off the screen. I'm going to connect my dots. I just have a starting point. Don't go below that. And there it is. A cube root. A little bit more difficult. It has what we call a turning point. A turning point. Its turning point is going to be at opposite same. 1, 1. So I go right 1, up 1. Now cube root function goes up 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. Now I'm supposed to go up 7 from here. It's supposed to be 1, 7, 19, but I never have enough room. So I just kind of fake it. I'm supposed to go down 7 there. And I just fake it and put that curve in. Cube root of x. This is located at 0, 0. I go up 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. I know I'm supposed to go up 7, but I don't have enough room. So I'm just going to fake it. I'm just going to fake it. 